What's up everybody? It's Mr. Austin and Miss Val, and we are so happy you've joined us today. We've got people joining us online, some people are joining us in person, some people are doing both. No matter what, we're happy you're here. Uh, this next couple weeks, we're going to be going over 2 Timothy, which is a book in the New Testament, uh, and we're going to be doing it alongside Big Church with uh, Pastor Nate, and we're so excited you're here with us today. So today is step one, and let's dive right in. Yeah, so so like, because we're going to go ahead and start our time with praying together, and then we'll jump into worship and our lesson with Miss Rebecca. Let's put our hands together, bow our heads, and speak to the Lord. Dear Lord, we thank you so much for bringing us here today with our City Light kids and our amazing servant leaders that are ready to share the word with our kids. We thank you for this church that you have given us, that you have kept us safe, that you have kept us healthy, and as we are starting to return to be back together, um, whether it continues online or whether we're in person, Lord, we pray that we just continue to focus on you. We pray that you grow our hearts for you as we dive into Second Timothy, a new book that we are going to explore together. And we pray that you do work in our hearts that allows us to carry this with us um, and to be fearless as we share it with others. We thank you so much for every single child, their hearts, their minds, and the amazing per person that each of them are. We love you so much, Lord, and we thank you for this time together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, let's get ready with Miss Cindy, and then we'll continue on with our lesson. We'll see you guys soon. Hey, City Light kids. Welcome to Sunday Worship with Miss Cindy. Um, so for the next couple of weeks, instead of learning new songs, we're going to repeat some of the ones we did before to see if you remember those Bible verses, okay? Because some of our songs have been fun and they kind of tell us what to do and how to act as a Christian, as a follower of Jesus. And some of them have been helping us memorize Bible verses. So for the next few weeks, we're going to do the ones that have helped us memorize Bible verses. So we're going to start with John 10, 9. This was a long time ago that we did this one, okay? It says, I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. Okay, John 10, 9. So we're going to sing it, help you remember it, and next week we'll review a new verse. Are you ready? Here we go. was a good one. I hope that you remembered it. And if you didn't, that's okay. That's why we have the words on the screen. Um, so we'll see you next week to start reviewing another memory verse. Bye. Hey, City Light kids. It's Miss Rebecca here. I have some very special guests joining me today. <laughs> hi. See, I say hi. Hi. All right. Tell me tell everyone your name. I'm John. I'm this Claire. Is Claire. Yes. So John and Claire, these are my niece and nephew. Um, Claire, do you want to tell everyone how old you are? I am seven year old and John? How old are you? I was six years old. So Claire is seven and John is six. So some Claire's of you maybe bigger. <laughs> Claire's bigger. So some of you may be the same ages. 
and they're gonna help me with our lesson today. We're both kind of tall, but we're not tall. Yeah, you're, you're both growing. I'm kind of shorter when I lay down. <laughs> yeah, that happens to me too. So we're starting a new series in the book of 2 Timothy. So if you have your Bibles, you can go ahead and get it out. But the book of Timothy is actually a letter from the Apostle Paul to Timothy, who is like a son to him. So I wanted to show you guys something. It's a very special box of mine. And inside it, do you want to guess what I have? Yes. yes. Notes. It's close to notes. What do you think, Claire? Uh, hmm. Letters. Oh my goodness, that was such a good guess. Okay, so you're right. I have a box of letters. And Yay. this letter is actually the second letter that my sister wrote to me who has been in boot camp for the military this summer. And the only way we've been able to communicate with each other is through letters because they don't have access to phones. And just like back in Bible times, they didn't have phones. They didn't have FaceTime. They didn't have Zoom. They didn't have email. They had letters. That was the way they communicated with each other. So this happens to be the second letter that my sister wrote me, just like this is the second letter that the Apostle Paul wrote to Timothy. So that's kind of a way for us to be able to understand this book as we're reading it. And just like how Paul is telling Timothy that he misses him and loves him so much, my sister's telling me how much she misses me, and I'm writing to her encouraging her and telling her how much I'm praying for her and love her and miss her during this time. Just like how we couldn't see each other for a long time and how much I missed you guys, and now we get to see each other. Yeah, so all the more special when we read the Bible, remembering that these characters were real people that felt what we feel and experienced the same things that we experience sometimes. Sometimes, um, if you feel bad for them, sometimes you might see someone else who you want to see. Yeah, sometimes it helps when you get to see other people like your family when you're feeling sad. And maybe an activity for you guys to try this week is to write a letter to a friend or a relative that you don't normally get to see to encourage them and make them feel better during this time. I mean, we don't, we see a lot of people we miss, but um, we see them a lot, so they're not like too many people we write letters to. Okay, well, it's just something to think about. <laughs> Um, okay. Because we go on walks and sometimes we see a lot of people. That's good. Or it could be a friend from school that you haven't had a chance to see. That might, like, if you drew them a picture and send it to them, that might make them feel better. Um, so we're going to read in this passage. The first parts are about you know, Timothy and Paul um, talking about how they, um, he loves him, misses him, kind of things that we would say in a normal letter to each other. Um, but we're going to focus on verses 6 and 7, which is cool because you're 6 and you're 7, Claire. So that's <laughs> kind of cool that those are the verses that we're focusing on today for our lesson. Um, yay! Yay! So I'm going to start reading it to us, and then I'm going to show us a cool example to help us understand it better. Okay? So These are two examples. This one, this one. <laughs> Compare together. That is kind of what we're going to be doing. All right, so verse 6 says, For this reason I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For the Spirit of God gave us, um, for the Spirit God gave us does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and self-control. So he's saying that the Spirit of God does not make us fearful, but gives us something else. And I'm going to show you guys. So we have some special logs here, they're little felt logs, and we're going to make a fire out of them. So this one says power on it. So power, what's that? What do you guys think power is? Uh, like, power is like energy, what you use. Yeah, it's like energy, so like the... The smoke comes up. Yeah, so a energy. fireplace gives energy. And breathing, that's for it, breathing. Yeah. The energy from the fire breathing. Yeah, it kind of is like that. Or like an engine in a car, right? That gives the power to fuel the car so the car moves. So this is the first one. So God's the one that gives us power because he is so strong two and has legs. all the power. And we have two more that we're going to talk about. So this is our first one. So we're going to put that right here in our fire. And then the next one that we have is love. Like you love someone who you really love the best. Yeah. And you love some more people that you really want to help out. 
Yeah, when we love someone, we do want to help them out. That's so true, Claire. Can I ask me questions too? I never said one. Yeah, would you like to tell me what, uh, what do you think love is? Well, love is, like you said, like saying a note to somebody. Yeah, sometimes when we love someone, we'll send them a note to them, tell them that we miss them, and we love, love them. they love them. Yeah, how much we care about them. Yeah, and the Bible also talks about that uh, the greatest form of love is laying down your life for someone. And who did that for us? Who God. Laid, yeah, God. God sent who? Jesus. Jesus to lay his life down for us to die for our sins in our place. So that's the greatest form of love that we have. So that's our next log. Okay. So the last one, you guys want to guess? What is yes, our last I know one? It is. What do you think, John? Um, kind of a big word. Liberty. <laughs> no, that's a good guess. <laughs> okay. You want to guess, Claire? I know. <laughs> what? <laughs> Super Mario Odyssey world. Oh, no, not quite. Okay, I'm going to tell you guys. It's self control. That's a big word. What is self control? I was about mean? to say that. <laughs> Were you? Okay, what's self control? Um, It's like um, if you're out of patient, you had to keep all of your hands to yourself. Then you won't touch anybody near the self control. Yeah, so self control is um, being like a really bit patient. Like, a bit like love. So, because if you be bad, sometimes you can just keep your hands to yourself and you can just like be That's nice to people my and not touch people. Yeah, so self control. If you touch people, then you might just get in trouble. Yeah, self control is maybe keeping our hands to ourselves, but just being patient, right? And yeah. God's the one that helps us do this with all of them. And love is also patient. So all of these things can be connected to love. So we have on our blocks, our little logs, we have power, love, that and self control. These logs were supposed to be the secret? <laughs> yes. So there we have our logs, and guess what? It what happens when you have a fire and you have logs, and then what do you put? Um, you light a match, and then what happens? Lights up the fire. Yeah, and then it lights up a fire. So we have a little fire. Oh, and it's because okay. it's a little plush. So the fire. You disappointed in the surprise? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm getting burned. So fire is. Um, Man, that makes me want to be steaming. Right steaming, now. it is kind of hot out here. So mm -hmm. the God is the fire, right? He's the one that has all the power, all the well, love, all the self-control. Well, if we're talking about it, then we gotta be a fire. And it, and He's okay, the one wow. that fans the flame in our hearts of the gifts that He's given us, and ultimately the gift of Jesus. So that's the fire. So if you guys want to sit down real quick, we're gonna pray and end our no, lesson together. I forgot oh, to you patch fire? this. Oh, thank you, Claire. Making our fire nice and ready yeah. and hot. Oh, you're lighting it up. Yeah. Yay, we have our fire. Okay, guys, so we're going to end our lesson um, praying together and thanking Jesus for all the things that we've learned. Okay, so if you can put like, your hands together. It's like you're a ninja like this. It kind of is like that. Okay, so we're going to pray real quick. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much that you're the one that fills us with power, love, and self-control that you're the one that gave us your son, Jesus, so that we could have a relationship with you. We pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Can you say goodbye? Bye. bye. Right, another great lesson. Thank you, Miss Rebecca. What'd you think? Yes, it was so good. So here's really what I learned. Um, if I'm feeling scared or fearful, it's because I recognize that I'm in a situation that I maybe can't control or I don't really know what the outcome is going to be, and I'm uncertain and uncomfortable about it. Right. So when we're feeling scared or when we're feeling fearful, we really need to check our hearts and see if we've invited God to be there with us. If we're feeling scared, it's because we haven't asked God to protect us or to recognize that he's already there to be our protector from anything we might be scared of. It's true because when we're close with God, based on the memory verse we're about to learn, he gives us power, love, and self-control. So if he fills our hearts with those things, there's really no room to be scared at all. Right, and we've learned that once we've accepted Jesus into our hearts, our heart is filled with the Holy Spirit. So think about it like a cup of water. If it's already full, there's, no, there's room. no room for anything else. So our hearts are already full with the Holy Spirit. There is no room for being scared or being fearful of anything around us. So when we're filled with the Holy Spirit, 
we can go out and fulfill the mission that he's called us to do. Right, so City Light Kids, take some time to look at the couch questions. It's gonna allow us to reflect on the lesson with Miss Rebecca and this amazing conversation. And we are so excited to be seeing some of you all, hopefully seeing some of you soon. And we love you so much. Yeah. And go be the light of the world. Bye, Bye City Light Kids.